Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my fold over lid box. Um, I've used the beautiful Share What We Love DSP or Share What You Love DSP. Um, I've not used it for so long and I thought, you know what, I love this, so why am I not using it more? Um, so I decided to use it for today's project. So as you can see, it's quite a cute little box, lovely little detail there on the side. And it opens up just like that. And then I've, I've put a lovely soap inside here and I've just popped a piece of DSP just in the bottom of the box there just to make it a little bit more prettier. Um, this soap probably is a little bit too small for this box actually um, and in honesty when I made up the centimetre box just to make sure I'd got the measurements correct it actually fits a lot better so it is a fraction smaller um, but it does fit a lot better. And then obviously we just have one lid folds over there and then this side has the um, sentiment and the panel on the top and that just folds over the top and they do sit just nicely together there's nothing to hold them together they literally just sit like that and like I said I think it's quite a pretty box um, you could fill it with cookies or treats or anything really um, it's really quite cute and it's quite simple to make as well even though it doesn't look it so I'll show you how to make it so to make the basic box it's the same as any um, box that we've done before you just need a for mine anyway you need a piece of cardstock that is six and a half by six and a half inches and we're simply going to score at one and three quarters of an inch on all four sides as I say it's just the, the basic way that we make our boxes so just score all sides at one and three quarters of an inch and try not to clatter it all around as I move them stuff. So I've got my bone folder and obviously we're just going to fold and burnish all of those score lines and then we're just going to cut the sides. I'm just going to use my big scissors here because it's slightly quicker for me if I can just move my little thing out of the way. So again just just the simple and it doesn't matter which side you do because they are all the same so we're just going to cut the tabs from the squares in the corners and just create those little wedges and then the same on the other side. Now if memory serves me correctly I'm fairly certain that that wasn't very straight was it? Let's try that bit again. Goodness me. That's better. Right, where was I? Apart from having an issue with this bit here, look. Which doesn't want to play a game, does it now? There we go. So, yes, if memory serves me correctly, we just need to take just a little noggin off those bits because otherwise they do overlap just a fraction. So as with always, let me get rid of my rubbish. And then I've just realised I haven't cut my DSP for the bottom of my box. That's not good enough, is it? Good job I can just grab to it, grab it easy enough. Right, that looks like it might just be big enough, save me wasting any. So just bring my so the base of my box here. It's good, good to show off the trim, isn't it? The base of my box here is three inches by three inches. So I'm literally just going to um, two and 15 sixteenths, whichever is the very last noggin. I've got this noggin on my brain today. It's not going to be very pretty, this bit, is it? But it doesn't really matter. So I'm just cutting it just a fraction under so that hopefully it will just sit in the bottom of my box. There we go. So let's just get that out of the way. So I'm just going to pop some adhesive on this and put it down before I make my box up because again it just makes things a little easier. So just pop in a little square of DSP in the bottom and then obviously I just need to add adhesive. Um, tear and tape is my new favourite now. Um, I do, f she says, going all fingers and thumbs, I do find it um, better in terms of 
you get a straighter edge with it because it's on straight edge so you just you know you can get right close to the edges with it which with some projects is what you need so I do like it so I'm just popping two lots on each side just again as I say it's just to add a little bit of strength just to those tabs there especially if you have got something like soap that can be quite heavy It'll just help to hold this box together so just popping all of these bits on here so that's that bit done so quite simply now if you wanted to stamp anything or put anything on this box then obviously you do it before you, you put it up, stuck it all together. So just take these off and just make up your box as you normally would. Just obviously this takes just a, a fraction longer than normal or, or should I say it takes longer now we don't have it as fast fused but I do prefer to use something a little bit stronger with card with the, you know the card as opposed to the DSP. Um, I just feel it gives it that added strength and it will keep it all together. The last one. Oh, I've had to close my window because of, um, we've got building going on in the field next to us. Um, and so there's a lot of noise and banging heavy machinery and it's quite annoying so I just figured I'd shut the window. I've gone really warm now. Right, so there's my lovely box made up with my DSP in the bottom. So there's my box, pop that to one side. Now to make the lid you need two pieces. Um, again I'm using the beautiful Share What You Love DSP and you need two pieces that are four and three quarters by six and a half and I've just realised that I didn't give the measurements in centimetres for this so for your box then it needs to be six and a half by six and a half inches and that's 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres and you score at one and three quarters on all four sides and that's four centimetres so the base of the box will be or should I say your DSP will be not honestly I think it's I keep blaming the heat and I know that's not going to work forever. So you need to you need to be working on just under eight centimetres for the box. So if my maths is wrong, I do apologise. So for your DSP, and I have already scored this one just to save some time. Um, if like this you've got a pattern and you want your pattern, so when you open the box, the pattern is this way so it's facing the right way you need to have your pattern on the short side from top to bottom so your long side is the way that the pattern runs if that makes sense I hope it does so DSP needs to be four and three quarter inches by six and a half which is 10.5 centimeters by 15 so on the short side we are going to score at one and two and three quarters, which is two and six centimeters. We're then going to rotate and we're going to score at one and three quarters and four and three quarters, which is four and 11 centimetres. As I say, I've already done the other one, but you would do it for both, both pieces. And then we are going to score those, sorry, fold those score lines, give them burnish. And like I said, we do it on both pieces. And then we need to create the box itself, the box lid. I've just realised I've done that one upside down. <laughs> Silly me, never mind. So 
So I'm going to have, an, in fact, I'm going to put that one. Oh no, it won't work, will it? Botheration. Okay, so make sure you've got one going the opposite way so that, <laughs> so that when it folds over, it's the right way. But if I can get it this way, you won't see the one that's upside down. Foolish, I know. Schoolboy error. Right, so what you need to do now is fold your pieces over because you need the wrong side facing you. You then need to grab your pencil and your uh, ruler and you will notice, I'm hoping you can see, you've got three squares. So you've got a really thin one here and then two here. So large, large, medium and small squares because that one's slightly bigger. So the small one we're going to forget because that's going to be cut away. These are the two here you need to make a triangle out of. So from this score line here to that score line there across the first square we're going to draw a line from one corner to the other and then we're going to repeat that on this one so the, the cross here where your score lines meet up to the top of that previous pencil line so I'm hoping you can see that okay so forget the little square medium square bottom to top large square top to outside and then you're going to do exactly the same at the bottom so from that score line up to the corner and then from this one the crossed score lines to meet the other one and then as I say we're going to do exactly the same with this one so score lines to the top and you're just looking to get that pyramid shape at the top okay and then once we've done that, we're going to flip, flip it round so you want to cut straight down between your triangle that you've just drawn to that first score line and then we're going to cut away following that pencil line there and likewise here, cut down that pencil line and then we're going to cut away this square here. And I'm just going to put a very, very slim wedge off that edge there. So again, cut down between the two pyramids, or be between the pyramids, should I say. And then down your pencil line from one corner to the other. Likewise, this side. And then we're going to cut away the bottom square and add a very th fine wedge there so you've got that shape and these are separated okay so I'm going to do it again with this one so cut down between the pyramid from the top follow that pencil line likewise the other side and then cut away the long small square and then we want to do a very small, very small wedge. So last one between the triangles, top corner, down to the bottom, top corner, down to the bottom, and then cut away that with a little small wedge. And that's what you are left with. So two of those. Okay, while we've got the wrong side of the paper showing, I'm going to add some more tear and tape. And this is going across the thin panel at the bottom. So I'm going to go right up as close as I can to the score line. And then one on the edge there. Oh, it's too warm. And then one again on this one, exactly the same, across the bottom there, and then another one across the edge. Do you know, I actually, I actually have that um, colour changing nail polish on, um, and it's quite funny because when I wore the last one, I had to put my fingers in warm water to show you the colour changing. This is the warm, the cold is red, but you can't. My hands are never cold anymore, so you can't actually see it, which I don't mind because I quite like this bright pink. Okay, so 
that's that bit done let me just check which side did I want the pretty showing oh crumbs it doesn't matter does it it's still going to go wrong whichever way I do in fact no I know I'm going to do it that way so we need to pop these onto our box so I'm going to do it like this so I know which side's going where so taking off my backing of my tear and tape and then I'm simply I'm going to tuck that in there to make my lid almost just so that I've got it to hold in place and then I'm going to pop my box in it I'm just holding this sticky bit with my finger so I'm, I've created my lid there happy with it all and then I fold this bit over so that sticks on there and then I'm going to do exactly the same with this side when the backing wants to come off the tear and tape anyhow so that's off there and don't forget all these products that I use are available I never use anything that's retired everything that I use is um, current product and I have all the links to all the products on my blog and to just below as well so if you're not sure what I'm using or you know just go and have a look either click the link to my blog or click on um, the shopping link and you'll be able to see all of the products that I have used okay so that's that bit stuck now nice and pretty so now I want to add my panels and I'm actually using wet glue and it's just because it gives you a little bit more wiggle room so we're going to fold this up and the triangle that's on the top piece is the one that we're going to put over the top so we need to add adhesive to this one here so oops so I'm just going to pop some on that side I'm going to do this side while I'm at it just because I like to be brave so let's fold that one in and then pop my lid on top you might get a bit sticky I generally do when I'm doing this so that's that one in place and then this one goes down and this oh my days I'm getting glue everywhere I can feel it all over my fingers okay so just check the alignment make sure you're happy and then if needs be you can just move it give it some wiggle room there we go so that's that bit done and then this one we do exactly the same so again on the one closest to the box I'm going to add some wet glue I'm going to put the lid on this otherwise I'll get it everywhere and then we do exactly the same again so pop that one down and then close your lid over the top and likewise this side pop it on put your lid down and just just make sure when you are squeezing that you don't slide it around because that is the tendency when you're holding it right so there's my pretty box so I'm actually gonna go with doing this one back to front because that's just me so this one opens this way this one is going to open this way so that they this will be hidden with the panel and so you'll still see the pretty paper so I just need to do my panel then so I've got some mint macaron and some whisper white um, this one is two and three quarters by two and three quarters which is 6.5 by 6.5 centimeters and the whisper white is two and a half inches by two and a half inches which is six centimeters by six centimeters so I have old olive and rich razzleberry and I have love what you do I've got the same sentiment and this lovely little leaf stamp here which I have so whoops rich razzleberry I need to get some wax I think on the runners because it's sticking a bit so just popping that sentiment there in the center and then old olive for my leaves 
which I'm simply just stamping in the corners. So I stamp the main image and then I stamp off just to add slightly different looks. And just as I say, just sort of stamping and stamping off just in the corners. You just don't always need to have lots. There we go, that's that one. And then, where's my snail? So I'm just going to snail this now onto my mint matter on. Just onto there. Make sure I get it equal. Which I'm not sure that is, but it's as good as anything else. And then I'm just going to flip it over to press it down because I don't want to rub on that ink just in case. And then I'm going to pop this on my box. So again, just adding snail, oh heavens, come on, to that side. And then I'm just going to pop it on the box, quite central. And then if you want to open the lid up and just have another press just to make sure that adhesive stuck there. And then I'm just going to use my Share What You Love embellishment kit because I want one of those really beautiful gold roses to just pop on the bottom. And obviously you could use some of the twine or the paper clips. And this has a really cute um, little glue dot, I suppose, on the back that you can just pop on the box and then last but not least I just need to pop my oh look what I've done I've done it sideways <laughs> silly me so oops so there are my two flip over lid boxes hope you like them and I hope it's inspired you to go and have a go at making a different type of box hope you've enjoyed it guys and I hope to see you all again soon bye